Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with you again for another video sneak peek preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. I'm particularly excited about this week's new release because it's the first book in a brand new sweet romance series by Jesse Gussman. The series is Flyboys of Sweetbriar Ranch, and this week's new release is book one, Just a Cowboy's Convenient Marriage. Now, we've got a live reading in just a bit, and I won't spoil too much here, but I wanted to say that I'm really happy that the setting for this series is one you just might recognize. It'll be pretty familiar, I'm fairly sure. Something else that's going to be fairly familiar is that Jesse is including, by popular demand, dishes in these stories, and I'm going to continue to make them for you here. That's right. It is time for another segment of Cooking with Jay. All right. This week, I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but our hero decides for, again, reasons I'm not going to say, to take a cooking lesson from a cooking class from the new owner of the local diner. Now, um, again, won't spoil why she's offering this cooking class, but the recipe that they make is crockpot cream cheese chicken chili. Now, I've got to tell you guys, I don't think I know of many other dishes with this high of a simplicity to deliciousness ratio. It is super, super simple to make, and it is just absolutely fantastic. It is a crock pot recipe, so it does take a little time, but it's mostly unattended time. So let's get started making Crock-Pot Cream Cheese Chicken Chili. All right. The first thing you're going to need to do before you get started with chili itself is to cook up a batch of bacon. The recipe calls for one cup of cooked chopped bacon. That is nonsense, of course. I think you guys know me well enough to know that I don't believe there is such a thing as the bacon limit in recipes. So I'm going to ignore the amount. I will say you want at least a cup of cooked chopped bacon, but I'm going to also share as a bonus tip here what I've found to be the best way ever of cooking bacon. So a great way to cook it is to take a pan, line it with parchment paper, lay out your bacon, then put that in the oven at 400 degrees for 22 to 26 minutes, depending mostly on the thickness of the bacon, whether you're doing regular or thick cut, and also how crisp you need it to be. Uh, if you're doing this for breakfast or whatever, it's personal preference. Here, we need it to be fairly crisp, so I'm going to take that into account as I cook it. Here's what it looks like in the oven. Look how even that is, how nice and flat. And the cleanup is awesome because if you're not saving your bacon grease, I've already got a jar in my fridge, so I'm not here. You can simply let the, the pan cool and the bacon grease will solidify. Then you just balled up the parchment paper and throw it away. Boom, you're done. Okay, now let's get on with our recipe for the chili. Okay, here are your ingredients. And now, as always, don't worry about trying to copy the ingredients or the amounts. I'll have that in the description of the video down below. And you may have to hit show more or whatever it says there to get the full description. But here are your ingredients. You need two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, one 11-ounce can of kernel corn drained, one 15-ounce can of black beans, drained. You're going to need one 10-ounce can of diced tomatoes and green chilies undrained, two cups of chicken broth. Also, you'll need 
one packet of ranch seasoning, ranch seasoning salad dressing mix. If you're using bulk seasoning like I'm doing here, it's two tablespoons. For the other spices, all you need is one teaspoon of cumin powder, one tablespoon of chili powder, and one teaspoon of onion powder. Lastly, you need one eight ounce block of cream cheese, and then also one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, which we're going to add at the end. Okay, so to start, first you're going to layer your chicken breasts in the bottom of your crock pot, like so. Next, in a large bowl, you wanna mix all of your ingredients except for the cream cheese and the cheddar cheese. So we're going to add our drained black beans and corn, our undrained can of tomatoes and green chili, our Rotel. You're going to add your two cups of chicken broth. Also feel free to panic like I did that you've used too small a bowl. That's optional. Next, add your bacon. And, you know, you may want to make sure that that bacon's okay. That's just, that's just good practice is what that is. Next, you're going to add your ranch dressing mix. Then your spices. And you want to give that a careful stir. Once you've got that stirred up reasonably well, pour that over your chicken. You'll want to even that out and then simply place your block of cream cheese down right in the middle. Then put your lid on your crock pot. Entirely optional if you want to have a big giant thumbprint with cream cheese on it. Your last step for now, cook on low for six to eight hours. After your six to eight hours, fish your chicken out of the crock pot, put it on a cutting board. You want to shred your chicken, you can use two forks or bear claws like I've got here if you've got them. But at this point, your chicken should nearly be falling apart. As you can see, it fell apart in pieces trying to get it out of the crock pot. So it should shred really, really easily. Before you add your chicken back in, take a wire whisk and whisk what's left in the crock pot really, really well to blend up uh, the cream cheese. Then return your chicken to the slow cooker. Stir in that cup-ish of cheese and you are ready to serve. Here's the final result, folks. And I promise you that bowl did not last long after I took this video. It goes great with tortilla chips or cornbread, and it is wonderful on chilly days like we've got right now. So that is how you make Crock-Pot Cream Cheese Chicken Chili. I hope you guys will give it a try. I promise you, you will not regret it. If you do give it a shot, please let us know how it turns out down in the comments. Okay. Now, it is time for our live preview sneak peek reading of Just a Cowboy's Convenient Marriage. I hope you enjoy it, and then you'll come back this Friday for the full release here on Say With Jay. Was that a pig? Smith Long looked out from under the brim of his cowboy hat. Yep. It was definitely a pig waddling up the sidewalk of your act as brain. What was the name of this rinky-dink town in North Dakota again? His aunt had lived here all her life, but it was barely a dot on the map. Sweetwater, that was it. He looked again. Yep, it was a pig. Its hind end swung back and forth as it made its way up the sidewalk. It was early May, but at least the sidewalk was clear. The snow melted away for the winter. He remembered various times over the years visiting his aunt where there had been snow on the sidewalk in May. 
Even at a young age, he remembered thinking, who in the world would want to live in a town that had snow in May? Someone who had lost everything and had nowhere else to go. That's you. Slapping his leg, he adjusted the brim of his hat and stepped around his pickup. He couldn't resist one last glance at the pig before he stepped up on the curb right in front of Patty's diner. The new community center, new to him, although it had been built for a decade or so, was around here somewhere, and his great aunt April would be there with her crafting group. They had a funny name for themselves, but he couldn't remember that either. He supposed he spent a lot of his life focused on himself and not really paying attention to the people around him. That was why he couldn't remember the name of the town or the name of the crafting group. And it could possibly be part of the reason why his wife had left him. It wasn't the reason he had lost everything, though. Maybe his mind drifted a little, thinking about the things he'd done and the decisions he'd made, and the one that still haunted him. He believed someone who had said they believed in him, and he trusted them far more than he should have. His line of thinking was brought up short, though, as what he would have sworn was a woolly mammoth, but he was pretty sure they were extinct, so it couldn't have been, went flying by him. The tip of its horn just grazed his T-shirt right over his abs. If he'd been wearing a winter jacket, it would have hooked him. It was going full speed ahead after the pig. He sighed. Small towns. They always had those quirky things, didn't they? Not that he'd spent much time in them. After being in the military, he settled in Raleigh, a nice warm southern city, and started his own business. More aware of his surroundings, he took his eyes from the cow and looked back from whence it had come. Perhaps there was something else just waiting to run him over. He was glad he had looked. A woman, long brown hair streaming out from behind her in curly waves, her face set in determined lines, her arms pumping as her feet slapped the sidewalk, raced forward, every line of her body straining to go faster. Smith almost grunted. This woman had a lot to answer for. He could have been killed by the horn that had, he looked down at his t-shirt to confirm his suspicion, poked a hole in his attire. Excuse me, he said, his drawl a little more pronounced, as it always was when he forced the politeness that had been stamped into him from birth. It always came out when he was hiding his emotions. At the same time, he stepped into the woman's path. She took another three steps before she realized he wasn't moving. She screeched to a halt, her arms flailing, her face lifting, moving from a determined frown to an annoyed grimace. Excuse me, I need to catch that cow. Your cow almost caught me. He pointed a finger at his t-shirt. Maybe the people of Sweetwater needed to catch up with the 20th century where people didn't allow their animals to roam freely on the sidewalks and think that it was perfectly okay. He knew someone who was new in town probably shouldn't ride in on the first day expecting to change everything, but this could be, quite literally, a matter of life and death. The woman looked at his t-shirt, the annoyance not leaving her face as she squinted. He thought, but couldn't prove it, of course, that she might have been exaggerating her squint. I'm sorry, I need a magnifying glass to see whatever it is that you're pointing at. Smith managed to keep his lips from twitching. He liked a woman with a little spirit. Not that he was interested in a woman. Nice, Sweetwater has entered the glass age at long last. Maybe the date thing was a little bit mean a little hit to all the small towns that always had so much trouble leaving the past behind. And he must have poked this woman right where she was sensitive, because her lips tightened even more, and her back straightened like someone had jammed a rod down her backbone. 
You can make fun of small towns all you want. There was no glass age. I'm sorry, you are correct. But there was definitely an age where people decided it was a bad idea to allow their animals to run all over town, and they kept them fenced in. Sweetwater hasn't gotten to that age yet, apparently. He raised his brows, annoyed that she didn't seem to care about the tear in his t-shirt, and the fact that someone could have gotten seriously hurt because of her animal running wild on the streets. Spoken like someone who's never owned an animal in his life before. If you had, you'd know that occasionally, despite your best intentions, they do get loose. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.